I would just like to speak a little bit tonight on how God is raising up hungry lovers that are fully committed to an abandoning worldly ways and carnal desire in order to pursue the pearl of great price. Now, when I say the pearl of great price, I mean no matter what the world has to offer, no matter how costly or the value that is placed upon what the world has to offer, it all pales in comparison to the beautiful face of Jesus the Christ. Our heavenly bridegroom anticipates his adoring bride, one that has flames of fire within, fire shut up in her bones for the Lord himself, not for a dead religion or an apathetic faith or a weak spiritual practice that is born out of obligation and duty, but out of a beautiful, beautiful desire for him alone and a willingness to respond to the Lord when he calls. Now, some wonder, why doesn't the Lord come for me? I can't experience his presence. And I would say, cultivate a deep, meaningful relationship with the Lord by, number one, sitting with him and just loving him, opening up your heart. You sit with him. Perhaps you want to set out two chairs and you say, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to sit with Jesus and I'm just going to to love him. And it's amazing how time can just sweetly pass by as you just sit with the Lord and love on him. And if your mind begins to wander, then just bring it back on track. Often our thoughts are like mighty rushes of wind that just kind of blow to and fro. And we have to train our mind to focus on the beautiful face of Jesus and not go to and fro as it desires. Our mind likes to just wander freely and it never stops thinking. We go from one thought to the next every single moment of the day. Usually our mind is always thinking about something. It never stops. It's like running a marathon, except for when someone runs a marathon, they get tired eventually and they stop. Well, your mind doesn't seem to ever get tired. It does at maybe the end of the day where you have to fall asleep and give your mind. But even then, you're often dreaming and your mind is still thinking and engaging. It's a wonderful thing that when you sit with the Lord and you practice his presence and you begin to focus on the beautiful face of Jesus and you just enjoy his company. You enjoy him, you love him, you desire him, you're there with him, and you just say, I love you. And then you enjoy his company some more. This practicing of the presence of God or beholding the Lord or waiting on the Lord or soaking in his presence, this is such a beautiful thing to incorporate into your devotional time with the Lord. Often, in many people's devotional lives, it consists of quickly reading something just as fast as you can go, and then you go down your prayer list, your mental prayer list, or perhaps even a, a paper list that you've written down of all your prayer requests, and you just quickly ask the Lord for something quickly. And then you just say amen, and then you go out throughout your day. And there are some Christians who spend their entire lives never going any deeper. They don't go into the deeper waters that's available to them through intimacy with the Lord. 
it's time that we move beyond just our prayer requests and into a deep, meaningful relationship with the Lord, which can be cultivated over years, where we walk with the Lord. I remember Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis. They walk with the Lord in the cool of the evening. Enoch, Genesis 5, 24, 21 to 24, Enoch walked with God. And we too can walk with the Lord in the cool of the evening. We too can walk with the Lord like Enoch. We too can be a friend of God like Abraham or a man after God's own heart like David. We can be a John the Beloved that lays our ear upon the chest of Jesus. And we too can cultivate that deep, meaningful relationship with the Lord. And so we learn to sit with the Lord and we learn to share our hearts and we affirm the Lord and then the Lord affirms us. We tell the Lord how much we love him and care for him, how thankful and grateful we are to him for all of his blessings and everything that he has done. He saved us. He sanctified us. He filled us full of the Holy Spirit. He blessed us with our families and many of us have a roof over our heads and a car to drive and food to eat. The Lord has been our provision but then we also we get quiet and we just wait upon the Lord we be still and know that he is God and then he begins to affirm us suddenly we get a revelation of his great love for us it feels as if love has saturated and filled the room and the tears freely fall down our cheeks because we're keenly aware that love himself has walked into the room and we spend time in that love that love comes with a peace that passes all understanding that love comes with a joy unspeakable and full of glory so we'll never experience these things until we take the time we say I'm gonna go into my prayer closet I'm gonna shut the door and I'm gonna pray in secret and God will reward me openly. My reward is him. That's my reward. It's not receiving a hand clap in a church service. He'll reward you openly. In other words, he will reward you with himself and you will be a carrier of his very presence. And when you go into a church building or you're with a group of people, they will know that you have been with Jesus or they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. What a reward, a reward of, of knowing the pearl of great price, of knowing your beautiful Savior, of spending time laying at his feet as Mary did, or leaning against his chest as John did, walking with him as Abraham and Moses, Enoch, Adam and Eve, what a relationship that's available to us. And this relationship's available on this earth now. 